Hi everyone, it's Dr. Shirazi. I'm a board certified cosmetic dermatologist practicing in San Diego. And today I thought I would talk about the difference between Botox and fillers. It seems simple. It seems really simple to me as a dermatologist, but it can be confusing because they're both injectables that we use for cosmetic purposes. But sometimes it's hard to know what Botox does exactly and when you use fillers and so forth. So before we get started, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe and comment below. Let me know if you've had either one and what your experience has been. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so Botox is a prescription medication that is injected into muscles. And what happens is it keeps the muscles from talking to the nerves. And therefore, when the two can't communicate, it causes the muscle to relax and not be able to contract. Well, when that happens, the skin smooths because when our facial muscles, like our angry muscles or our you know, frowning muscles or raising our eyebrow muscles work and contract, they crinkle and wrinkle the skin. So when they relax, the skin smooths out. Fillers, on the other hand, these are considered medical devices. They are in the form of a gel or a solid substance that are injected under the surface of the skin to either plump the skin up or fill in depressions or lines or help sculpt facial features. So that's the main difference. And you can see here in the video where I'm injecting it and you can see how solid it, it is. So it's not a liquid like Botox is. So there are different types of Botox. There is Dysport Botox, which is the original company, uh, that original name of the brand. And then there is Zeoman, which is basically they took Botox and they removed all these extra proteins around it, purified it and made it into a much smaller protein. And they called it Zeoman. And then Javot is the newest Botox or Tox on the block and it's very similar to Botox. So in terms of wrinkles, Botox is best used for the wrinkles in the upper third of the face. So our glabella, which is this area that causes those 11 lines and then the forehead lines. And then these are called crow's feet. These lines here are formed when you smile. And so when we relax the muscles of expression in the upper third of the face, we notice the skin gets smoother. It actually looks better too. We see, you know, the pores improve. It just makes the skin look shiny. And it also can help reduce sweating. So we use Botox actually for a lot of different reasons other than, than lines. In the lower half of the face, we don't really use it so much for wrinkles and lines, but more to lift and fine tune certain structures. For example, you know what smokers lines are, right? So when you purse, you form these little vertical lines that go around the lips. Well, we can inject Botox a very small amount strategically because there are a lot of muscles in the lower face and you definitely don't want to knock out the wrong one. <laughs> And so when we inject Botox there, it allows the muscle to relax and those lines get better. Well, the other thing that happens is you may have heard of the Botox lip flip, which is when this muscle is relaxed, it allows the upper lip to actually flip up and you see it more. Some people come in and say, you know, when I smile, my upper lip disappears. And when we use Botox there, it shows more. It doesn't disappear as much as you can see in my best before and after of a Botox lip flip. This beauty uh, had very thin lips. We didn't want to do fillers, so we used a little Botox to allow the lip to flip up. Now, we can also use it, speaking of smiles, uh, we can use it for gummy smiles, which is when somebody smiles really big and their lip mo moves up a little too high and you can see you know, their gums, and so we can control that and make the lip not move up so high so that you show less gum when you smile. And then chinulite, yes, there is such a thing. Some people, when they talk, you'll notice they get a lot of dimpling in the chin area. Well, over time, that dimpling and wrinkling in the chin can cause little etched lines. So by injecting a little Botox, it helps for those lines, preventing those lines, but also helps smooth the contour of the chin. Lastly, we can keep people from frowning 
by injecting it into the muscle that pulls our lip corners down. And this is called the DAO muscle. And when we knock this out, it allows the corners to be pulled up by the muscles up here. So Botox is just phenomenal. It does so many different things and I'm not even covering all of it, but you can hopefully kind of get an understanding of what Botox really is. It's a play on muscles. And I always tell people, you can give Botox to 10 different people and you're gonna get 10 different canvases because it's really like a paint and it can be used in so many different ways. The key is people that are injecting it should really understand the facial muscle, the anatomy, and really study your specific muscles to be able to know how to best use it to allow some muscles to work and others to relax and get the desired effect. Let's go to filler. So fillers, again, there's different types. The most common type of filler you may have probably heard of are Juvederm, Restylane. These are hyaluronic acid fillers. Hyaluronic acid is found in our own skin. You and I both have it. It's a sugar that attracts and holds on to water, so it helps plump up our skin. We, we do lose it over time with aging, but we can use all different types of hyaluronic acid because they're all structured differently. Some hyaluronic acid injections are made up of thick spears, some are smaller, finer spears, some are cross-linked differently. They, and, and those give them different properties. So some fillers tend to spread more, some fillers tend to plump up the skin more. Some attract a lot of water while others don't. So you don't want to, for example, use a filler around the eyes that tends to attract a lot of water because you're going to end up with puffy eyes. So it's also important to know all the different properties of all the different fillers that are on the market because I say Juvederm, but there's all different types of Juvederm. There's Juvederm Voluma, there's Juvederm Volor, there's Juvederm Volbella, there's all these different types of Juvederm. And then there's different types of Restylane. There's Restylane Contour, which is the newest one. There's Restylane Kiss, which is super fine, but it causes a lot of swelling. So it's a little bit more complicated than that. It is all hyaluronic acid, but they are formed and made into different types of gels. Other types of fillers are Radius, which is a calcium hydroxy appetite. It's derived from bone found in your own bones, it's a white, it's more of a hard filler. So I love using it like in the jawline, the chin, the cheeks when I'm doing facial sculpting. And then there is Sculptra, which is polylactic acid. And that's an injection that was first discovered by using it for HIV patients that would get super gaunt. Because what it does is it stimulates your own face to form collagen. And so it allows the face to become fuller because we all lose volume in the face. So it's a great, collagen stimulator to restore volume. And then finally, there is polymethacrylates, which are permanent fillers. They last at least five years. They're great for acne scars. And the brand name is called Bellafill. And I particularly just use it for acne scars because I am not a fan of anything that is forever because we don't stay looking the same forever. And so why should we use things that lasts forever in our skin. So I find it's much better to use fillers that we know will dissolve over time because even th even those fillers, you know, may not all dissolve. And so that's a whole other YouTube episode. But I hope that made it clear in highlighting the difference between the two because I know it can get really confusing. So thanks for tuning in. And if you're on social, follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Skin by Dr. Ozzy. I also have a podcast more than a pretty face and comment below let me know what you want to hear from me next thanks for tuning in guys